I know exactly what's in these banana chips and that's just banana. None of those artificial colors, flavors, and they're not deep fried as well. So these things are super good for you and they're absolutely delicious as well. G'day there, it's Rachel here from Bush Edge Homesteading Australia and I've been to the bulk wholesale markets today where I've picked up this big 15 kilo box of bananas and that's going to keep us in fresh eating of bananas for a while. Um, one thing that's really cool about buying them in bulk like this is that you can get lots for fresh eating at a really good price. I think it's about $4 a kilo at the moment when you go to your Woolies and Coles for bananas. These I picked up for about $1.60 a kilo so it was a really good deal. And what that means is I've also got enough now to be able to preserve some up as some yummy dehydrated banana chips. And we love eating banana chips in this family, if they're good ones. Now, I, I put that little disclaimer on it because there is some really crappy banana chips out there. Ones where they kind of soak it in sugar and they get a bit grainy. When you do your own banana chips, you can do them in a really clean way where they literally are just banana and you don't need anything else. And when you do them like that, they are absolutely delicious. So follow along with me today and I'll show you how to make them so you can have a go at this yourself. Now to make our banana chips, it really is as simple as peeling a bunch of bananas and then cutting them into slices. Now when I go to do this, it's often a good idea to peel a whole bunch of your bananas first and then to slice them up. And that way you get a bit of a uh, conveyor belt going and it's even better if you get some extra hands involved to help you as well. But I find it's a lot quicker than trying to do one banana at a time by peeling it first and then by cutting it. Now, when you go to slice these, the thickness is important. If you do them too thick, they're not gonna end up like a nice little um, chip. And, and I will say, when you do this recipe, don't expect them to be super crispy like the ones you get at the shops. These won't be like that. And that's because the ones you get at the shop are actually deep fried. These have a little bit more of a chew to them when you eat them. But um, if you do want them to be a little bit crispier, thinner is the way to go. Now, I don't like them too thin though. So thickness about yay is what we're looking for so that's probably about half a centimeter thick so here's a whole bunch of our bananas all cut up and again that thickness you're kind of looking for it's around half a centimeter I'm doing this by hand so you can see that they're all a little bit different and that's not the end of the world um, some people like a thinner, crispier banana chip, others like a little bit more chew, so that will give you a bit of that variation. Um, now that I need a bit of room on this chopping board before I get to more of these bananas, I need to start moving some of these across to my dehydrator trays. And I'm going to be using my Excalibur dehydrator today, so these are the trays for that. And I do use the mesh um, when I'm doing this one, not any of the solid sheets, so that you can get a lot of that airflow in and around your bananas. So let's start loading up our tray.
So here's our tray number one, all loaded up and ready to go into the dehydrator. You can kind of see the spacings that I've done on here. They're quite close together, but I don't have any of them touching. And that's because you do want enough airflow around your bits of banana so that they dry out quite quickly. Let's just move that one aside a bit. All right, and let's take this one outside. All right, I've got the dehydrator set up outside today and we're using the Excalibur dehydrator today. The reason I've got this one outside is because it is super hot today. It's I think 36 or 37 degrees at the moment and this is not something I want heating up the house at all. Remembering that a dehydrator is essentially just a bit of a, a heater with a, a fan. So it's just blowing hot air or quite warm air over your foods to dry them out. So that's not something I want going in my house today. All right, I'm gonna keep loading this up. And once that's all loaded, let's set the temperature and the time. Here we go, last tray going in. So that's now all loaded up. And this one here is one of the Excalibur. It's a, a nine tray unit. So there's nine trays of bananas in this one here. And if you're using the same type of dehydrator as myself and you want to know how many of those bananas actually went in here, it was about half of the box. So depending on how thickly you cut your bananas, you're looking at somewhere between seven or eight kilos of bananas to fill up the Excalibur. All right, let's put the front on now and get the time and temperature set. There we go, there's our front on. So when it comes to time, I think I've mentioned before that I really just kind of set this for a really super long period of time because when I'm dehydrating, I don't go by time. So I essentially am just not wanting this thing to turn off. So I'm just going to set this for, well, there we go, 34 hours in the future. If I was to check within 34 hours and it still wasn't dehydrated, I would just keep it going. But the way I work is not by time, it's by when things are ready. And that really should be the way it works when you're dehydrating because even though most systems or you know these units will give you some kind of time as a bit of a guide the reality is it comes down to whatever conditions it is you know is it really humid where you are is it really hot where you are and it also comes down to the produce itself and how much moisture was in the produce that you're trying to dehydrate so time as i said we'll set it for some time in the future doesn't matter as long as this thing doesn't turn off temperature we are going to need to change so that's currently sitting at 35 degrees celsius and that's a bit low for dehydrating bananas another question i get quite a bit is how do you know how long to dehydrate stuff for and that's where this book comes in in handy this is the excalibur manual that actually comes with the excalibur dehydrator and all i do is i just look in the book to the section with fruit in this instance and here we have our banana temperatures and also some indicative times. It says it should be somewhere between six and 10 hours, depending on the weather conditions. And let's look here. We need to dehydrate this at 57 degrees Celsius, which is 135 degrees Celsius. For those of you using, well, what is it? Fahrenheit, <laughs> you can tell I'm an Aussie. Degrees Celsius is what we go by here. And essentially what we're trying to do is dehydrate them until they are a leathery texture. That's the other really good thing about using this book is there's usually a few tips in there as well as to what the type of produce looks like when it gets to that state of readiness. Some things will be nice and crispy, other things will be leathery and that's the texture we're looking for with our bananas. So let's set the temp to 57 degrees Celsius on the Excalibur. And we just do that by hitting this temp button if you hold it down it goes up quickly Murphy's law is if I hold it down it would go too far too fast so there we go we're now sitting on 57 and it's just a matter now of hitting our start button and that will start up now you may have noticed some of the bananas in there were looking a little bit brown and that's perfectly fine that's normal for how I'm doing banana chips and how I always do my banana chips. Some people will add lemon and things like that. In fact, maybe let's take the door off so we can have a bit of a closer look at what I mean. Um, some people, you know, put a little spritz of lemon or something like that on top of the bananas. Um, 
you can do that. That will help with them not browning quite so much. But to be honest, for me, it's not about the look of this product. It is about the taste. And it's also a little bit about being as no fuss as possible as well. So with me, all I do is just cut the bananas like I've shown you, and then I just pop them straight into the dehydrator. It really is that simple. If you want to, you can put some flavorings and stuff on these. Like I see a lot of people adding things like, you know, maybe a bit of cinnamon, and that's great. That can be for your own personal taste if you want to do that sort of thing. But uh, for me, I really do just love the straight up banana chips like these are. All right, I'm gonna get this front back on. And let's leave these to dehydrate. I'll probably come back later tonight and check on it. Um, actually, one other thing I should have mentioned when we were talking temperatures is, can you dehydrate things at too high or lower temperature? You know, is it actually important to get this temperature right that's listed? Now, there is a bit of variance that you can have, but the reality is most products will have a bit of an ideal temperature to dehydrate at, and that's to avoid two things. The first is if you dehydrate at too low a temperature, sometimes things can spoil. So you don't want to dehydrate at too low a temp. Um, you know, if you've got that moisture level for too long a time, it can allow the bacteria to um, do their thing on your food and spoil it. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. And the other thing is if you do it at too high a temperature, you can get this thing called what's called case hardening. And case hardening is essentially where you dry out the outside of your product really quickly and it creates kind of like this hard case, which is why they call it case hardening. And that can then inhibit or really, really slow down the middle of your food from drying quickly. So in order to avoid that case hardening, you do need to not have too high a temperature when you're doing your dehydrating. So that is why in all these wonderful books, like the Excalibur one here, they will identify whatever the ideal temperature is for the food that you're going to dehydrate. All right, let's leave our bananas be. We'll come and have a bit of a peek tonight. And if they're not ready then, we will leave them overnight and then we'll check them again in the morning. Now, in case you're wondering what we're gonna do with the rest of the bananas, the rest we're either gonna eat fresh or we're gonna freeze. So this bag here that I've chopped up roughly, they'll go into the freezer. What I'll do is I'll let them start to firm up and then I'll give this a bit of a shake so that the pieces don't stick together. And then whenever I need any banana for something like a smoothie, I can pull those out, banana bread and things like that. And uh, when you make smoothies with frozen chunks of banana, it is absolutely awesome. It makes it really thick and oh, not quite slushy like, but it, it almost gives this kind of density of texture to it. So it's really handy having bananas like this in the freezer. There's no canning recipes for bananas. So that's why I'm not canning any of these today. It's just not one of those products where there's safe canning recipes for it. So either in the freezer or dehydrating is the go with our bananas. Now, as for our banana scraps, they are all going to go into our compost. And I've got a little bit of work to do out here with the compost where I need to throw a lot of this material through the mulcher and these banana skins will go in there as well. But that is a job for another day where it's not as hot as it is today. So I thought I'd give these a bit of a check before bedtime. They've been going for about six hours now. So it's probably a good idea just to check the texture before I go to bed. I don't expect they're gonna be ready yet though, but it's always good just to have a look. All right, let's pull one of these off. Yeah, you can probably see already that it's still pretty flexible. I can still feel there's a fair bit of moisture in there. So we definitely need to give these a little bit longer. In fact, I'm gonna give them the night and come back in the morning and check them again. And hopefully by then they'll be done. Good morning, guys. It's about five o'clock in the morning, or actually it's just kind of after. And I thought I'd pop outside, have a bit of a look at how my bananas are going. And yes, I can be a bit of an early bed at times. It's probably a crazy time for most people to be up on a Sunday morning, but uh, sometimes that's just me. Anyway, let's have a bit of a look at our bananas. I've been going now for, so that'll be about 14 hours. So I'm expecting they're gonna be ready. And yes, they are. That's perfect now. If I give that a bit of a tap, oh, let's try a different spot. 
little bit here that's fairly firm. When I try and bend it now, it doesn't have that same flexibility that it had when we were um, testing them last night. So I'm going to switch this off now and leave them to cool. And once they're cool and it gets to a bit more of a respectable hour for everyone else, I'm going to start to package these guys up. Now that our bananas are all dehydrated, it's time to start packing them up. And what I'm going to do is put some of the bananas in this jar here and any clean and dry jar will do. You definitely want it to be nice and dry though. That's the important thing. And that's because you've gone to a lot of effort to dehydrate these bananas. And if you start adding any moisture back in, they're not going to store and they can spoil. The other thing we're going to do is vacuum seal some. And the reason I want to vacuum seal them is, well, actually there's a couple of reasons. One is it's going to be a lot better for the longer term storage. With this one here, we'll be opening and closing it all the time. And as you open and close the jar each time, there is a chance that you could introduce some moisture and things like that. So um, if it's for longer term storage, it's not the ideal way of storing it. It'll definitely store better with this uh, vacuum seal. The other thing is, in our family, if I put them all in a nice accessible jar like this, they're going to get eaten up. And they may get eaten up very quickly and not last for a period of time. Whereas if I have a couple of different batches, we can enjoy a good amount now and also a good amount a little later as well. All right, let's start packaging them up. So you've probably been noticing that I've been pulling these off one by one and that's because they do kind of stick to this plastic mesh. One of the great things about having a mesh like this though is that it has a bit of flexibility and that allows you to kind of give it a bit of a bend and then each one just kind of pops off nice and easy. So they're not difficult to pull off but that's why I'm pulling them off one by one. Now the other thing I just wanted to show you was the texture of our bananas here. So you can see here that it kind of bends a bit. It's not entirely crispy, but it is perfectly dry when I break that apart. That's the jar full, and now time to fill some of these bags for the longer term storage. Now, if you're new to my videos, you might not have heard me say this before, but when you're filling vacuum seal bags, it's always a good idea to fill them all first before you start sealing anything up with your vacuum sealer. And that's just so that if you need to adjust the volumes between your bags, it's nice and easy to do that. Because obviously once it's sealed, it's sealed. So when you do this, you want the dry setting, normal setting, if you've got those choices on your vacuum sealer, and then it's just a matter of vacuum and seal.
So here we are with our finished dehydrated banana chips. And we got out of that seven to eight kilos of bananas, one really big jar of dehydrated banana, and also two really good sized bags as well of these dehydrated banana chips. Now, as you can see, they aren't that golden color, as I warned you earlier, that you get from those banana chips in the shops. But you know what? That's perfectly okay by me because I know exactly what's in these banana chips and that's just banana. None of those artificial colors, flavors, and they're not deep fried as well. So these things are super good for you and they're absolutely delicious as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hopefully this gives you the confidence to have a bit of a go at dehydrating banana chips yourself and you'll know what to expect and you won't be surprised if they look a little bit brown like these ones, but trust me, it's definitely worth the effort because they taste wonderfully delicious. Thanks for joining and catch you later.